next we need to design for the shear resistance for the perimeter at 2D from the column face these are the formulas that you can use to design the shear resistance to determine the positions of the 2D perimeter you can use the average D which is an average value of dy and dx as calculated earlier on on the basis of the depth of the foundations of 475 2d will be equals to 4 at 4 mm from the column surface the perimeter for the 2d from the column surface, it will be equals to the perimeters of the columns plus the perimeters of a circle with a radius of 2D. That gives you 6528mm. Then you estimate the areas within the perimeter. It is determined by the area of a circle with the radius of 2D plus the area of the column plus these four areas. You can use with the aid of the graphical presentations for you to determine the area within the perimeter. Next, we need to determine the shear force for the area outside the perimeter. You can determine the area outside the perimeter by minusing the area of the base with the area within the perimeters. This area is to be multiplied with the bearing pressure acting on the pad foundations which is calculated as 237.6 kN per meter square multiply with this area 2.883 meter square you will get 6 at 5 kN now you need to determine the punching shear stress you know that the pad foundations is subjected without any moment that means this part will be equals to 0 and your beta will be equals to 1.0 the u is calculated here and the d is calculated as the average value of the d for both directions of the reinforcement bar your shear stress calculated is equals to 0 0.247 Check this shear stress with the shear resistance by using this formula. You will need a K here. This K has already been calculated for the shear plane of 1D from the column surface. And your shear resistance is 0.377 Newton per mn squared. The resistance is found to be greater than the shear stress. That means your shear resistance for punching shear is adequate. Next, you need to check for the punching shears for the column perimeter here. These are the formulas that you can use to do the calculations. Your VED will be the design Asia load acting on the column, which is 1.35 and 1.5 GK and QK. The column perimeter will be defined by 2 times column width times 2 times the column length. That gives you 1.2 meter. Now you need to determine the punching shear stress along the column perimeter. Since there is no moment, this part will be equal to 0 and the beta will be equal to 1. The shear load is calculated in the calculation step earlier on and U0 is already calculated as the perimeter of the columns. The D will be the average value of the D 
for the reinforcement bar. Your calculated shear stress will be equals to 2.92 newton per mm squared. Your shear stress here is to be checked against the shear resistance stress as given in the formula here. The alpha CC will be equal to 1. The gamma C will be equal to 1.5. Substitute the relevant value. You will get your shear resistance of the concrete equals to 4.5 newton per mm square. This value is larger than the shear loops. That means your punching shear at the column surface is satisfactory. Next, you need to check for the cracking for the maximum bar spacing. You can adopt this formula and refer to table 7.3n to determine the maximum allowable spacing of reinforcement bar. You have the value for GK and QK. This represents the quasi-permanent actions, while this represents the ultimate load acting on the foundations. F5K is equal to steel grade of 500. The factor of safety of the reinforcement bar is 1.15. You will get the value of stress equals to 215.2 refers to the table 7.3 interpolate the stress in the steel and you will find your spacing of 231 mm you are referring to the typical crack width of 0 0.3 mm based on the amount of reinforcement bar provided which is 13 numbers of Y16 being provided along the width of the base of 2.5 meter. The spacing between the reinforcement bar is about 201 mm. This spacing is less than the maximum allowable spacing, therefore the crack is adequately controlled. This figure shows a typical reinforcement for the pad footing. You will have 13 reinforcement bar of Y16 arranged in both directions and the dimensions of the pad footing is 2.5 meters times 2.5 meters 0.475 meters.